Welcome to the MBS Show, episode 210. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Ty. Hello. Hello, Ty. How are you doing, man? Doing pretty good, honestly.、Uh, you know, I wrote an exam today, but all in all, feeling pretty good. How about you? I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly put, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, so, t r u t came back. Like, a few weeks ago, I had the flu and whatnot, and I recovered. Now I'm hit with a sore throat, and、uh, likely I'll be sick, and、uh, it's not gonna be fun. Anyway,、um, I'll recover and I'll be well, I hope. And also joining us today is Infinity. Bonjour, mon ami. Hello, Infinity. Bonjour. Bonjour. So you'll be translating for us in the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> for all you French viewers. <laughs> yes, a big, a big hello to all your French viewers. I mean, I take, I'll take all your French questions if you want. <laughs>、oh, I, I, I'll be sending them to you then. <laughs> so, how are you doing, man? I am good. I am really、um, enjoying my time here in France and I'm really, really liking being part of the Brony community. Awesome, awesome. So, for people at home, Um, Ty here has been on the show a few times, and Infinity here is a new person. And with every new person who comes onto the show, we have a rule. And that rule is the four important questions. Question number one for you is favorite character? Applejack. Oh my. Applejack blows everything for me. I mean, him off the show. there is no <laughs> rival. There is no rival for Applejack. Applejack is God. That is it. Oh wow. Any reason why? She is the element of honesty, which is the thing that I look for most in most friendships. I love when people are honest to me.、Um, and I, I dislike it when I'm being lied to or people who try to hide behind cameras and, you know, try and make themselves look, you know, that they're not exactly what they are. So Applejack, pure honesty, pure element of harmony and everything like this. She's, And, and also, she's such a family lover. I mean, she is, I mean, if you look all the episodes with Big Mac and Apple Bloom and Apple Jack, it's just so lovey dovey. And I'd love to have like sort of like family relations like that.、Uh, It's、right. a character you can really look up to, huh?、Mm-hmm. Apple Jack is one of those characters where she may be boring in terms of what she did in the previous episode. Like, she didn't do much if you think about it. She's just、oh, yeah. there helping and stuff. But she's. Kind of a family pony, like she helps everyone and treats everyone as kin. She's very consistent. I think that's、uh, the best way to describe her. <laughs> yeah, and that's what makes her boring. She's、yeah. too predictable at points. That makes her boring. But you know what? I don't care. I like Applejack. Applejack's awesome.、Mm-hmm. But not as awesome as Fluttershy, though. Fluttershy is awesome. Of course. I, this is what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no,、mm. but yeah. Still, I'm not. I'm not going to raise an argument over this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would have to. I would have to emphasize that Fluttershy is my least favorite. Really?、Mm. Oh my goodness! We're going to have. I find, her, I find her. I find her the most boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't blame you. But we all know that Sunset Waifu is the best waifu. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We can all agree on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, favorite episode. <laughs> Your episode has to be apples to the core. Apples to the core. That one. Oh, oh no, no, Pinky Apple Pie.、Sorry. Yeah, Pinky, Pinky Apple Pie. Apples to the core is one of my favorite songs, but、That's、it's in that Pinky Apple Pie. I love that one. It's just because it's pure apple, pure apple family with Pinky Pie and you know lots of songs. Who doesn't like that? I mean, I'm still d- debating whether I like Crusaders: The Lost Mark as well because that one was just so well written.、Mm, But、yeah. um. I'm not too sure. I would say I'd say Pinky Apple Pie because I'm just a pure Applejack fan. Yeah, you you would love the new comic,、uh, Friends Forever issue that stars Pinky Pie and Granny Smith. Like, go go read that if you want to enjoy Apple Family Fun. I shall.、Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, how did you become a fan of the show? Ah, well, um, I became a fan of the show. Now, this is a really weird story, actually. Um, there's, oh, there's nothing to um, I I, I knew about the critical acclaim of the show. Um, because I'd watched a few YouTube videos,、um, but I never actually watched the show until about early,、um, about September 2015.、Um, because at、uh, this time I was just about to go to France, and I was actually at a, a friend of mine's wedding,、um, and we had stopped off to see a friend,、um, like a family friend, who had just had some twins,、um, and、uh, we were around at the house, and I started. 
I was just looking at the TV because, I mean, I can't help but look at TV sometimes when I'm so <laughs> bored. Um, it's man's best friend after all. I looked at it and turns out it was Tiny Pop who was the network on and I saw it was My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And at this time, I didn't know what the episode was, but I can reveal now it was Return of Harmony Part 1. Um, but I, I really liked how the... I, there was no sound coming out of the TV, but I really liked how the sort of images were going across the screen. Like, it doesn't didn't seem like it was just a show for, like, little girls. Um, and then, of course, when I went home after the wedding, I actually properly watched that. And it just became just so part of my life. Like for the first month I was in France, I just spammed internet. I just spammed all the, I watched all the way up to season five um, to Princess's Dream of, um, to Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep. Um, that was when the sort of, the cutoff point before they started doing the Cantalot Boutique and everything. Um, before it was that little gap of production in 2015. Um, so I was able to catch up and I was also able to experience the sort of tension of the um, Crusaders, the Lost Mark as well. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell, even if it wasn't really in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, I, I, I need to understand this, because you said that you came into the fandom during September of 2015, that was last year, and right now is April of 2016. You transitioned in pretty fast. How How many episodes per night did you watch? Well, I watched season one. Uh, I watched, I think I watched the first two, and then I watched the first five in, in the first night. No, it's just because in France, I had absolutely nothing to do for the first two. Like, the first week, I was really scared. Like, I was really, like, I didn't know what was going to happen, because I didn't actually have anywhere to stay, for one thing. Like, for the first week, I was just staying in a hotel until I could find some more suitable accommodation. Uh, and whilst I was in the hotel, all I really did was just stay in the room use the Wi-Fi, and watch My Little Pony all day. Uh, so I managed to, in that whole week, I got two seasons done, and then I continued to watch it. Um, so I was I was about, like, I just watched Mad Home's Mystery Cure by the end of that week, and then I got on season four, and then once I found proper accommodation, it was just a matter of seeing season five. Um, and that was it. Uh, I got I caught up to the point, and I started, you know, really looking at other brony stuff, like... Uh, some of the fix, for example, like Dr. Wolf, like, uh, I know Ty has been working with Dr. Wolf quite a lot recently, and, uh, he's got some really good fix, and I'd like to maybe do that myself. And which you have been doing as of now, because, um, I was surprised to know that you were a film fic writer, and I've read one of your fix. Yes. I, I'm still quite new to the writing scene. I only started in, in December, so I just as soon as I, um, started watching the show, because, I got a lot of inspiration from it. I mean, if, if you look at the amount of, like, you know, the colours in that show, I mean, the, the colours, the, there's so many colours, and you just have colors. to think. <laughs> yeah, so there's so many ways, so much beautiful art, and so many, like, you've seen all the other, like, I mean, I obviously joined quite late, so, I mean, there's so much art out there that they have, that has been inspired by the show. Like, if I were to make name like a really, really good music piece that I love is Lullaby for a Princess. <laughs> and that is just, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. It's legendary. <laughs> Very much uh, so. It's just magical. I mean, it, to think how many people put so much time and effort. And then, of course, the animation. So yeah. more breath breathtaking. Um, and it's just, you know, people put this time and effort into this show and it's only supposed to be attractive to little kids, but I mean, so many other people have gotten into it. And, you know, when I started doing, when I started watching, I was so, I was so sort of proud to be part of this sort of community. And it was such a good way of meeting new people. Like I've met so, like I met you guys for one and everyone else. And it's just so much, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting as many people as possible. Awesome. I hope you do, man. Like, I hope you do. Um, and last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for Sid's show? <laughs> well, <laughs> a fun one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mother was very, she wasn't too sure what to think at first. Um, cause then most of, what most people's perception to the show is, hmm, you like my little pony? Hmm, I shouldn't think I'll start questioning your sexual orientation. <laughs> because I mean, most, 
like people started thinking I was like my father thought I was. Ooh, is my father is my son somewhat by curious <laughs> all of a sudden? They're quite fine. I do exercise like I I'm an open person and I talk about the show a lot, even if they don't really want to hear it. <laughs> oh. um, so I'll just I'll just spur out anyway. And well, my mother's completely fine with it. Um, except she's a bit cringy about it. She just doesn't really understand why I'm so interested in magical talking <laughs> unicorns and pegasi. In fact, my family owns a horse. We actually have a horse. Oh. Um, we, wow. my, my sister does horse riding and she upkeeps a stable for herself. Truth of the matter is I'm not that into real life horses. <laughs> now, mostly because they smell. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, nobody can stand the smell. Like, we love to pet dogs and whatnot, but nobody wants to wash them because of the smell. Well, see, that, this is why cats are the best, because you never have to wash them. They wash themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's great. So, friends? Well, I can tell, tell you, my friends. Some of my friends, when, when I first said to people I was a brony, I was, they were like, oh, no, not you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, well, there's one friend I have that really does not like, she, he's given it a try, but he just doesn't understand the appeal. But he d- does, he hates the Brony fandom with, because, because he, um, he thinks that they're all about, you know, preaching love and happiness and colors and, and art. I mean, he thinks the Brony fandom is flawed and he is somewhat right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is flawed in some sense. There are some people out there who do make weird, like, mistakes and such. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's any fandom, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Any group of them. But, but, I mean, there's some people that have appealed to it. So people who I didn't know were actually interested in the show, I actually found, like, for example, one of my closest friends at the uni um, liked, um, has been a peg sister for, like, a year, and I didn't even know. Mm. And as soon as I told her, I was like, oh, yeah, what's your, who's your favorite character? So I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not you, too. <laughs> Ah, this is what geez. ruins the fandom. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Still, that's pretty cool. Core, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we will have one of those cases where um, friends don't really care or we have a friend who loves the show too. So, yay! Awesomeness. Well, glad to know that you have someone close by who enjoys the show with you. So, those are the four important questions. Thank you, Infinity, for uh, answering them. Yay! But I was wondering... Have you been to a brony convention? Well, I come from Scotland, so um, the most likely event for me is Brony Scott. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, I, I I was in France at the time when I became a brony. So, I mean, there, I've checked for French cons, but there doesn't seem to be that many. Um, there doesn't seem to be any at all, actually. Um, oh. Like the most the most closest ones were the heartwarming con that was in that Kyle went to, Kyle went to, and uh, there was the uh, the Swiss con, I think, sometime in July. But I mean, I'll be back in Scotland by then. So I would have gone to Brony Scott if I could have. That was in November last year. So I'm definitely going to go with this year. Um, but no, I have not been to a con, and I'd really like to. If I'm not mistaken, there is a French Brony con- Brony convention. I'm, I'm just, pretty sure there is. Yeah, yeah because I do remember <laughs> Larson going there once. Was it in Germany? I I forgot, but. I do remember one being there. I, I just need to look at where. I'm not sure, but I mean, to be fair with you, Europeans, every country's close. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> to be fair, Thai money's an issue. Yeah, obviously, money is a bit of an issue. Like, it's one of the things that's um, for me, for example, it's hampered me from going to conventions just because you need money. But I guess another thing is also time. You know, you have to set aside sometimes a weekend or even like a couple of days, maybe a long weekend. Or, mm. you know, it's a lot of time to set away. And especially if you have something like school or a job, you know, you can't always just set that time away. So, um, especially if you have to take a long trip there, it's not just close by. Yeah. And talking about close by, um, it's rare for me to say, but Malaysia will be having its own Brony convention, and it's the Ooh. Friendship Express. Like, last year we had the Friendship Express around, well, uh, February was it, I think? And now we're having it again on the 19th and 20th of November. Um, so how, how was it then? Well, let's just say I had an awesome time. Um, the people who ran the con were, well, previous hosts of the show. They wanted to do something, and they did. There you go. And, well, here's one thing I can say, is that if you have a dream, go for it. 
it's going to be hard, but once you get it, it'll be worth it. And look at my friends, Daniel and uh, Charlie, who work hard to make the con happen. It was awesome. Uh, I got to talk to Vincent Tong, who's the voice actor for um, Garble the Dragon, uh, Flash Sentry, Flash, yeah, Flash Sentry, and mm-hmm. also got to host an artist panel. Like I was the moderator for it, and I got to sell some swags, and it was fun. <laughs> Swag. Yeah. And this year having it again, it's well, it's good for them, man. Like uh, this year's convention will be held at the um, make space at Quill City Mall. <laughs> so, uh, I'm guessing that's the location where if you are going, look out for it. Because I am going and who knows, if you are there, come and meet me. But I hope you guys can come too. If not, maybe just, I don't know, buy a plane ticket, sneak into a crate or something. <laughs> well, that's that's a thing, uh, it's a little bit far away, but... Um, I think that'd be interesting. Now, just a quick question. Okay. Hmm. Is this the only convention you know of that's in your area? Or is this like, um, or are there a lot of them? Well, if you're talking about in the area, like yeah. if within the Southeast Asia region, uh, no, not really. But within Malaysia, this is the only one out there. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, this is kind of like your convention of the year then, I guess. Huh? Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm. I have to come. I have to go there because... It's like, <laughs> how do I put this? You, if you have um, Dr. Wolf or Silver Quill going to BronyCon and whatnot, um, the Friendship Express has me. I'm technically a nobody, but, well, <laughs> I'm someone, I guess. In Malaysia, you're a superstar. Yeah! <laughs> Just imagine you with like, the sunglasses, all the cameras flashing, you jump out the limo, <laughs> red carpet rolled out as you walk into uh, the... Uh, Quill City Mall. <laughs> yep, yep. But still, that's pretty cool, though. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's going to be fun. And probably I could do a Skype call with you guys and we do something insane. Who knows, right? <laughs> you never know. When you're at the convention, indeed. things can go wild. Indeed, indeed. Well, I do hope that you guys can go to a convention soon because the experience of meeting other bronies is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you, like this is the thing because, (laughs) like a lot of us, um, like for example, for us three, for we we live in completely separate parts of the world, so we don't get to actually see each other in real life on a normal basis ever. So these conventions are kind of that opportunity to meet people that you just know online in real life and actually like talk with them and see them and you know enjoy the convention experience with them. It's something that um is a little bit rare, but, but it's really nice. So it's uh. Definitely a good experience, yes. Have you guys went to any other convention besides the Bruni convention? Like, anime convention? Nope. <laughs> None? <laughs> None for me. No? Infinity? You too? No? I've never been to a Comic-Con or anything like that, because I've never seen much interest in it. Uh, also because I, you know, I am tend to just seclude myself in my room and just play video games all day. Mm, understandable, understandable. Because one of the attractions of going to a convention... For me, was uh, I went to BuckCon 2014. That was Ooh. an awesome time. I, I got to meet a lot of friends who I met online. Like Ty said, uh, meeting on meeting people who are online, getting experience of going to a convention and stuff. And I yeah. got to met, sorry, I got to meet Dave Polsky, a writer for the show, um, Jim Barrow, who wrote the My Little Pony books, the little novellas, and also okay. meet Heather Breckel, who's a colorist for the MLP comics and. Those yeah. things are pretty awesome. And unfortunately, BuckCon, well, this year was their last. Mm. Well, this year coming up, isn't it? No, it was past. No, it was, it was already past. Yeah, it was oh, it's already week. passed? Yeah. <gasps> mm-hmm. <laughs> I was thinking of going. Sad. Yeah, I know. You are saying, Infinity? I was thinking of going to uh, Buck, but because uh, of my circumstance, um, because I'm in France, mm. I was thinking of actually going back to... Um, going back to Scotland for a while, um, or the UK for a while, because I kind of do miss it, um, being in France. I mean, French have their nice teas, but, you know, it's not, like, true home. Anyway, back to Brony. I was planning to go to Buck, um, and, of course, I had to never, I sort of said, ooh, do I, do I have the money? I, I certainly had the money for it. I just didn't know if it was worth it, just going to 
to Manchester for like two um, two days and then having to um, ship myself back to France. I mean, yeah. be better if you know, like I lived. If, if, if I lived, if I was still in Aberdeen, a, a simple train to Manchester wouldn't take too much. So I probably could have gone if I was in Scotland at the time, but. Uh, I still managed to go back to Scotland anyway and uh, see some people, even if I didn't go to the, the con. But it's one of those situations for you where you have to pick and choose or prioritize. Prior, prioritize, was it? Pri prior, prioritize. Yeah, prior, prioritize. Prioritize, yeah. Yeah. prioritize <laughs> what you really need. As for you, you have a responsibility with the family and also going back to France. And also the people at BuckCon, they, they have their priorities to deal with too. And... Well, this year was a pretty awesome one. They had Peter New, uh, Big Mac, for from the show on as a guest. And, well, it's one of those cases where, hey, uh, we're going out with a bang. And we yeah. hope that everyone enjoys the experience at BuckCon. And, yep. <laughs> yeah, and I had a good time there. It's meeting friends, eating the good food, and it's just much fun. And knowing that they won't be anymore, it's going to be sad now i don't want to be the the sort of devil's advocate here mm -hmm. but is this a bit of a sign that maybe the fandom is starting to slow down um i don't know if that's the case because usually with any convention it's it comes down to money mm -hmm. with any any project to be exact like money is an issue because yeah we have to kind of well invite guests they don't come cheap Especially if you're shipping them from the States. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're going to have, like, some sort of special guest coming in, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you usually have to pay for their uh, airfare and whatnot. <laughs> mm, yeah, and more than um, that. More than that, actually, too. Like oh, and, and yeah, there's all. other costs as well. But I think um, one thing with Buck, the reason why they sort of, they stopped it all. I think, because uh, I, I remember reading this a while back, they wanted it to be sort of a really special convention, kind of unlike anything else. And I think um, what they said was, like, it was getting to a point where they just couldn't provide that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so while they still could host this convention, it perhaps wouldn't be able to surpass the previous year's ones or even surpass what other conventions are doing around the world. So I think they were getting to a point where it's like, okay, we can still do this, but it's it's not going to be as good. And maybe they just don't feel as, I guess, motivated almost. It, maybe that's the right word. Probably, I don't know. Probably. That's what I read, but I don't know if that's correct per se. Yeah, prob still. Probably it's one of those cases. And also it's, well, it comes down to motivation and... <laughs> Money is also an issue. I don't harp on money, but money is an issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's it's one of those things that, you know, it means a con's going to go or a con's not. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to get those tickets coming in or else uh, no con. So it's a tough business. It really is. If you think about the ratings of the show, too, I mean, ratings, if you think about ratings in the first three seasons, ever since then, they've kind of been dropping because I think people are starting to think, oh, they're taking it a little bit too far now. They've some people may not be so appreciative of this, but I'm a big fan of Equestria Girls. Um, not everyone is. And most people prefer just the actual ponies themselves. They're making a fourth one, and some people are saying, ooh, is maybe, this, maybe this is a bit too far. Like, maybe it's just Hasbro just trying to spam marketing more and more. I mean, how, how much can people take is the question there. True. I totally understand what you mean with that, too, because with MLB having its sixth season now, and a uh, fourth Equestria Girls movie and a uh, big screen theater released in 2017. So we, we can clearly tell that Hasbro could be, well, spamming or milking the cow, as they say, for the big bucks. <laughs> Honestly, if there's a story to be told, why not, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I, I think one thing to note as well with the, the show is not a lot of shows make it to a season six <clears throat> not a lot of shows make it to a season five four or, you know even three there's a lot of shows that fail to get to that point mm -hmm. so the fact that it's gone on for this long over this many years is something remarkable in and of itself i still think there's going to be that appeal i still think they're going to keep continuing to make episodes as long as the people who are you know writing the episodes and the staff behind it are still going to be there because mm -hmm. once if you know if they start leaving then everything starts to crumble. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, like for now, uh, in season six, we don't have some of the previous writers like 
Larson, mm-hmm. he's not writing for the show anymore. And Amy Keating Rogers, she moved on to Disney. So, oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most of the legends, the or the people that we enjoy, are not working there anymore. So, could this be a sign, or could new talent come up and raise the bar? Who knows? Like, if the show is good, if the show has a lot of followings, they're going to have more seasons. But anyway, um, talking about seasons, most from what I heard from fans, they say that Spike is not one of their favorite characters. It's like... Aww. Uh, I like yeah. him. Yeah. I like him. He's yeah. such potential. It, He's such yeah. potential as a character. I mean, I, I like to imagine sort of, you know, fic- fem- fictions, and I read a lot of fictions in which you see Spike sort of just grow up a little bit because mm. he does seem quite insignificant as the dragon, but you'd like to imagine him as being like, you know... The, the sort of masculine, maybe a bit more... Because, I mean, if you consider the main six, they're all girls. Mm-hmm. Spike is the only one, really, who has the main sort of masculinity in the show. And even that is somewhat... <laughs> <laughs> if you see with the apron and the taking cookies and tea, like, in, I think it was was the Dragon Quest yeah, one yeah. where he's, like, they're watching the migration and Spike's just serving them with the, <laughs> the tea and the gown mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. And Rainbow Dash sort of says... Oh, yeah, Spike. <laughs> uh, well, Rainbow Dash was a jerk back then, but still, we get to <laughs> see him improve more and more. But here's the thing. How many of you guys played the My Little Pony mobile game from Gameloft? Not at all. I don't play uh, mobile games. No, the, My phone is very I. clean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Do you? Well, I used to play it once, like uh, back in the days where it was hackable. How was it? It was... Let's just say that it was a game. It's almost (laughs) like... Well, it was a game. (laughs) Yeah, it was a game. It was almost like Farmville and whatnot. But from what I understand right now, people who still play it are having fun with it. And, well, back then, the game was kind of... It was kind of meh. And guess what? They just added Spike now. So how long has it been out? Three or four years ago. And they've just added Spike. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. I <laughs> I feel sad for the little fella. Isn't he a loved character? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well. I have no idea. But Infinity, what do you think, man? Like, you, well, you kind of powered through everything. So what's your opinion on the little fella? Some people do say Spike is best pony. Um, just cause that, that, that's quite funny like that. Um, but I, I really like Spike. I would really like to see him being, I, I like to see more of him. I feel that the show doesn't, he only puts them in with, like, whenever, whenever Twilight's around, Spike is mostly around. We never see a yeah. lot of Spike just on his own. If we just had, for example, Dragon Quest was about the only one episodes you see Spike on his own, but even the ponies still follow him. So, if there could be something like maybe just something between Twilight and Spike, and the, well, maybe like what was one of the first ones in season one was uh, uh what was it Owl, Owl's Well that ends well, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, where where there's that sort of jealousy between Spike and the the pet. Hmm. Like I I like to see more of those sorts of episodes because it seems a lot a lot of focus. I think there's a big sort of I think it's because they try to drive it at the people that where they're getting the most marketing from. So, for example, CMC and sort of, you know, the main six are just drilling up all the episodes. And even Slice of Life, I mean, that was such a good episode just because it appealed to everyone's, like, like it appealed to the fandom sort of, like, ideas of where everyone, you know, was and, you know, well, it was a nice like thing Octavia to and then, yes. yes. I don't mean, Spike as a character is interesting because he can grow and, well, Spoilers to this episode is all about Spike. Yeah, so, I was about to say actually that like, and especially this season too, you can start to see that I think they're going to start utilizing his character a little bit more. Obviously, we don't really know just yet, but I think they're going to start using his character. We saw in the season premiere, you know, he was one of the main characters used mm-hmm. quite a bit in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I think, yeah, as you said, today's episode, I'm pretty sure it's all about him. So I think he's going to get a lot more screen time this season. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's obviously a little overdue, frankly. <laughs> yeah, after six years, come on. The little fella could have gone through a growth spurt. Like, he's still short, for God's sakes. 
it happens though. Some people just <laughs> can't grow. And yeah. it's okay. Maybe he will one day. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's a late bloomer. Who knows? Probably. Oh, yeah. Uh but I I had a segue for this, but I kind of mess it up with the new slot. But hey, Katie Goose no longer working for the comics anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a sad thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's uh, sort of a passing on the torch of a one era to another in a way, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, for people who don't know who Katie Cook is, Katie Cook is one of the writers for the My Little Pony comics. She was the duo who gave us the return of Queen Christmas with Andy Price. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy Price yeah. was the artist and she was the writer. And, well, she has her ups and downs, but most of the comics I've read and enjoy are, well, written by her. A good example is the micro series featuring Luna. That was an awesome comic that she wrote. And well, uh, according to Katie Cook here, um, the upcoming 42nd issue will be her last comic for a while. Um, she's been doing this for four years now, and she's going to be focusing on her personal projects. She said that uh, her work with MLP was the most positive experience there, with working with the people there and with his with her co-worker Andy Price. So she had a good time and well. And that that's one thing that's really good too, the fact that she did have a good time. She's not leaving because there's something really bad that happened. It's because, you know, mm. you know, she's moving on to bigger things perhaps. Maybe this is, you know, just like weighing her into something bigger and better. So mm-hmm. um, hopefully good luck to her. Yeah, um, certainly a big thanks for uh, making the comics for so long. Yeah. Um, and let's just hope that, uh, you know, the quality continues. <laughs> yep, yep. And here's, here's the thing. She's not quitting the position. Um, from what I understand, most of the people who work there are contract workers. So okay. she could be just saying that, okay, IDW, I have my own things to deal with now. So I'm not renewing my contract as of yet. So I'll be doing my thing. If I need any more work for MLP, you know where to call me and I know where to call you. So, hey, keep my number kind of deal. Oh, yeah. There's always the possibility. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you you never truly know. Obviously, it doesn't look, seem like um, she left on bla- uh, bad blood. So uh, we can figure that maybe in the future she might return. Mm-hmm. But we we really never know. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it's one of those things. Uh Still, very, very good time, obviously, with a lot of the comics that she's made, so that's always good. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, of... they're leaving, but, you know, you never know. Maybe yeah. things will be mm-hmm. even better, so. <laughs> Is there any character in the show that, uh, that has had previous appearances in the previous seasons, but hasn't appeared a, a lot recently, and so maybe would be someone you'd like, to, you know, to see again? Well, here's the thing with the series and the comics, they're two different entities. Uh, the comics yeah. they get their lore, 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 lore from the show. But here's an interesting answer for your question. In the comics, we got to see a lot of uh, tertiary characters. For example, we got to see Iron Will, the Flim Flam brothers. Uh, we got to see um, Charlie's sister, and we got to see a lot more development from the comics for some of the side characters that we won't see in the show. So that's really cool. And as for characters I want to see more in the upcoming season, well, I would love to see more of, uh, well, <laughs> cliche as may be, uh, Trixie. Trixie is one of those characters I would like to see. You know, one character that nobody ever talks about mm-hmm. is Zakura. Well, Zakura is well. Okay, I would love to see her too, but I'm thinking she needs of... an episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's the evil enchantress, and she does funny dances. <laughs> yeah, well, Zakura's one more character too, and well, in the recent issue, uh, My Little Pony comic issue forty-one, she was kind of the narrator for the story there, so that's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Like we're certainly seeing her character in the comics, but I think she's far, far overdue in the show. Oh yeah, I mean, she needs more attention like the season ender for season five yeah she was there and she's gone yeah so we need more we need more yeah without a doubt by the way infinity have you read the comics 
I have not read most of the comics. I mean, comics isn't something I actually um, read in general. Um, I don't know why. I just haven't really got around to doing it. Possibly because I'm pers- I'm not exactly great at reading either. Like, I write, um, and I actually read a lot of film fiction, but I don't read, like, proper novels. Oh. Um, because, you know, who wants to read a boring novel about, you know, a romantic, like, like two people... Well, when when you can just ship Twilight and Rainbow Dash together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally understand. But I have a solution for you, my friend. It's called Audible from audible.com. Over there, you can have a lot of books being read to you. A good example is Emmy Larson's book, Penny Royal Academy. It's fun. Like You can go listen to the person reading the book to you and act out the scene. And it's all awesome. That was the plug for the day. <laughs> yes, yes. I need to plug Emma Larson. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. I love it. It's good. It's good. I like it. Yeah, but still, um, Audible is a good option if you want. But <laughs> it won't be pony related. So yeah. But anyway, but, still, but anyway, I, I do recommend you reading the mm. comics if you get the chance because it's a fun additional thing for your pony content. Yeah. Oh. I just thought of a great comic book um, title. Oh, uh, just now, um, "Daring Do and the Quest for the Great Library." <laughs> 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 ah, yes. a bit of an inside joke. <laughs> mm. Yes, well, I have to say that Daring Do ain't going to get that library because <laughs> it's mine, of course, right? <laughs> oh no, 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 uh, no! That's mine. That's mine. No. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> talking about gl- gr- talking about great libraries, I I think we need to deal with that one pretty soon, right? Indeed, oh, yeah. indeed, indeed. So anyway, um, that's the show for this week. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshow at gmail dot com. You can also reach us on the twitters. The show's Twitter account is at thembsshow. Tweetybot will tweet about this show and retweet the show and well technically she'll talk to you if you talk to her you can also reach me at Norman Sanzo I tweet about toys food and whatever tickles my fancy and tickling my fancy is I don't know I'm kind of sick food is not a thing that I want to talk about right now <laughs> I love how it just completely contradicts what you just said I am sick I, I... that's fine that's fine I'm not... You'll be okay. You'll get better. You'll be eating food in no time. Yeah, and I post pictures on it. Also, if you have the cookies, you will. Yay! If you're interested, you can also well dig or follow me on the Instagram. I do have it, but I don't think that's well. If you're interested, it's there. Oh. So, Ty, what about you, man? Well, you can always find me on YouTube, you know, youtube.com slash Tyndega. You can also find me on DeviantArt. I make some of the art stuff, so you can find me there. And you can find me on the Facebooks. Uh, I usually post uh, a lot of random stuff, to be honest. Not necessarily food. Uh, I'm not a food fanatic like Norman here, but I do post some food for thought. So mm. if you want to check me out there, please do. I do like that post you did with the textbooks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Which is true. It's you so go- true. You go to college, you go to university, you go to high school, they don't really use those textbooks. Maybe in high school they do, but not in college. Those things are just like for show. Pay hundreds of dollars just for (laughs) those top. Pretty much. And what about you, Infinity? Uh, Well, um, I just got started really, so I don't have that many links. But I mean, I can say I don't tweet for starters. (laughs) I'm not a complete saddo. Um, You just like has everyone banging on his every whim, mm. uh, just looking at, um, like keeping up in all his social life. Um, I'll, I, I mean, I got, I'm talking about thin fiction, so thin fiction, uh, infinite fiction on thin, thin fiction, really. Um, pretty much, I'm just really on thin fiction. I have a YouTube channel, but I, it's not really set up yet. Um, but it's, it's called the Dawn Fanatic if you want to check it out. So that's the, the Dawn Fanatic. Oh. Um, because I'm, I love Dawn uh, from Pokemon, and oh. uh, she has no she has no rival, just like Applejack. And I like <laughs> I really want to do a film fiction with Applejack and and Dawn, uh, just because they are so good characters. Well, um, there's always the equestrian girl option. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, the channel itself doesn't have many. It has some few parody videos. Two, in fact, two parody videos that I have created. Um, but should you want to have a look at that, you can have a look at that in your own time. All right, then I'll add that to the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Uh, links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been uh, Diane Dega, I think. <laughs> Still working on it. And I have been Infinite Affection. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. We'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bonsoir. Bonsoir.